Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of, of The Robe That Binds Us, As Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. As we've been discussing the previous episodes about the importance of following the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, and we came to know that in order for us to follow the, the way of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, to hold into the Sunnah, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we also must hold into the way of his companions and to follow their footsteps and to follow their methodology in understanding the religion and practicing the religion. And today, we can move to another uh, point, which is what we mean by innovation, because the worst matters are the invented matters in religion, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi used to say. If we want to define the word innovation or bid'ah, the definition of religious innovation or bid'ah is what was invented in the religion after the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if somebody did something in the time of the Prophet sallallahu and the Prophet sallallahu approve it, it will not be considered innovation, even if it was done by one of the companions. For instance, the Prophet ﷺ once was praying, once was praying. He raised from the rukur, from the rukur. Uh, he was bowing, then he stand up before he goes to sujood, prostrating. And one of the companions made a specific supplication. The Prophet ﷺ said, who did that supplication? Who did a supplication which is not uh, one of the supplications that the Prophet ﷺ taught the Sahaba? That companion said, that was me, Ya Rasulullah. I have said such and such. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have seen so many angels were writing down your supplication because it was such beautiful supplication, a beautiful dhikr. Can somebody today comes and said, okay, I want to invent this after the time of the Prophet? No, it became an innovation. Only if it was done during the Prophet ﷺ time and the Prophet ﷺ approved it. So it will be accepted. So innovations is something been invented in the religion. It's not in the culture. It's not related to non-religious issues. After the Prophet ﷺ times, people invented microphones and sound system, cameras, TV, uh, videos, uh, tapes. There are so many things were invented after the Prophet ﷺ time, but they're not related to the religion. They're related to this worldly life. These things in related to the worldly life, there is no bid'ah in it. There is nobody can say it's innovation to ride a car or an airplane or to use tanks or rockets or airplanes because this is not the way the Prophet ﷺ used to uh, use. These things related to the worldly life. There's a difference between things related to the religion and things related to the worldly life. That bid'ah, which is related to the religion, uh, it was something invented in the religion. So it's a religious matter. It's not related to the worldly matter. So nobody can say, for example, this laptop is bid'ah. You cannot read Quran from it. Or uh, somebody say, uh, I heard just recently, uh, an Imam Masjid was almost fired from his uh, position because he used laptop instead of using the paper that regular people used to give the khutbah or read the notes for khutbah from. He put his laptop in the member and he was uh, addressing the people and reading from his laptop. Uh, they fire him because this, they said this is bid'ah. Uh, that has nothing to do with the religion. This is just a, uh, related to the worldly, uh, it's a worldly matter. How to write it, how to display the information, also the video, the, this uh, pointer, uh, and so on, so, which is uh, things related to the worldly matter, there is no bid'ah in it. 
Bid'ah is related only to the things which is related to in the religion. So it's a religious matters. Then the second condition, after the time of the Prophet Sallallahu So if there is something who was invented by one of the Sahaba or been started by one of the Sahaba during the Prophet Sallallahu time, it will not be considered bid'ah. It will not be considered bid'ah because it's either something the Prophet Sallallahu approved, the Prophet Sallallahu approved, so it became sunnah. Or the Prophet Sallallahu disapproved and the Prophet Sallallahu stopped people from doing it, so it will not be allowed to be, it will be something forbidden or not recommended, so we cannot do it. Anyway, it will not be part of the bid'ah, the religious innovation. Then here, the definition goes, by adding or leaving an at, uh, which has no foundation. So let's see first, adding or leaving. Bid'ah can be by adding something to the religion or leaving something from the religion. Some people think that bid'ah is only by adding something to the religion, but it could be the other way around. Leaving something from the religion or leaving something religiously, if we can say that, it will be considered a bid'ah. For instance, in uh, some time in the history of Islam, some people said, we will never drink cold water. And they worship Allah with that. They want to please Allah by not drinking uh, a cold water. One of the uh, scholars of hadith asked the person who said that, why you will not drink uh, cold water? He said, because it's a great ni'mah, it's one of Allah's bounty on us, and uh, cold water is, is something I cannot thank Allah enough for it. Then that scholar said, have you thanked Allah enough for what have, have he blessed you with from your eyes, your nose, your heart, your head, and all these things that you already thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough for it? To avoid or say I'm not going to drink water, cold water. So this is became a bid'ah, it became a bid'ah. Also by adding something to the religion, by adding something to the religion. Somebody will add a new prayer, a new supplication, and he will add this to the religion. He said, okay, part of the salat to add this or that. Let's add to the adhan, like it's so common in some countries. Uh, uh, after the adhan finish, they will add to it, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. They will add the salat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and his family. It's not part of the adhan. The Prophet Sallallahu when he taught the Sahaba how to call for the prayer, which we call the adhan, he never add these additions to it that people practicing today, or some people practicing today. So it's either by adding or leaving, by adding or leaving something uh, from the religion or leaving something even if it's not from the religion, but he will avoid it religiously just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. Uh, let me just ask, uh, maybe we can raise this question. What if somebody start wearing thick clothes? We say if he wear thick clothes because it's cold, it's winter, we say it's okay because this is worldly issue. But if he start wearing wool and thick clothes because he thinks that wool, soft, is uh, something very special and it will make you closer to Allah. And as much as you wear old clothes and thick clothes, it makes you more righteous, more accepted, and your prayer will be more accepted by Allah or something like that from this nature. Now he start wearing this religiously. He start avoiding other type of clothes religiously. And here it became bid'ah. Here it became bid'ah. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he saw a woman, when he saw a woman, she promised or she made an oath that she will perform the Hajj without, without being in the shade. She will always stay in the sun. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to her, don't do that. Don't do that. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda also saw a woman uh, or a man who promised that he will never be in the shade, he would never sit, he will be always standing until he finished the Hajj. Abu Bakr said, this is not allowed. And he said, stay in the shade, sit and walk. This is the son of the Prophet Also a woman uh, once took an oath and she said, I will never talk 
uh, yani I will uh, abstain from talking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. See, she avoided something here, which is talking. Uh, by the way, uh, abstain from talking is a form of fasting for the nations before us. But it's not allowed in our religion. Uh, it's not allowed in our religion. We know the Prophet Zechariah, uh, Maryam alayhi salam, uh, Mary, she, uh, she promised or she made an oath uh, that she will not talk for three days and nights. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran about uh, them. But in our religion, it's not allowed. That's why when Abu Bakr also saw a woman who said she will not talk, he said, this is not allowed in our religion. This is forbidden in our religion to fast or to abstain from talking at all for a, a, a day or, or in a way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. This is not the way we fast as, as Muslim. <laughs>we say it's okay because this is worldly issue. But if he start wearing wool and thick clothes because he think that wool, soft, is uh, something very special and it will make you closer to Allah. And as much as you wear old clothes and thick clothes, it make you more righteous, more accepted, and your prayer will be more accepted by Allah or something like that from this nature. Now he start wearing this religiously he start avoiding other type of clothes religiously. And here it became bid'ah. Here it became bid'ah. That's why the Prophet wasallam, when he saw a woman, when he saw a woman, she promised or she made an oath that she will perform the hajj without, without being in the shade. She will always stay in the sun. The Prophet wasallam said to her, don't do that. Don't do that. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda also saw a woman uh, or a man who promised that he will never be in the shade, he would never sit, he would be always standing until he finished the hajj. Abu Bakr said, this is not allowed. And he said, stay in the shade, sit and walk. This is the son of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Also a woman uh, once took an oath and she said, I will never talk. I will uh, abstain from talking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. See, she avoided something here, which is talking. Uh, by the way, uh, abstain from talking is a form of fasting for the nations before us. But it's not allowed in our religion. Uh, it's not allowed in our religion. We know the Prophet Zechariah, uh, Maryam alayhi salam, uh, Mary, she, uh, she promised or she made an oath uh, that she will not talk for three days and nights. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran about them. But in our religion, it's not allowed. That's why when Abu Bakr also saw a woman who said, she will not talk, he said, this is not allowed in our religion. This is forbidden in our religion to fast or to abstain from talking at all for a, a, a day or, or in a way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. This is not the way we fast as, as Muslim. Anyway, so leaving an act, which is, has no foundation in religion or in a manner which is, has no base in the religion. What's the difference between these two? And this is very, very important. Sometimes what people add or leave, something has no basis in religion at all. There's no foundation for this matter in religion at all. Such as some people celebrating, for instance, 
or the birthday of so-and-so share companions or one of the Prophet Sallallahu wife. Somebody's going to celebrate birthday of Khadija, birthday of Aisha, or the birthday of Khalid ibn al-Walid. He said, this is the day we're going to make Mawlid, they said, and celebrating, and it will be on a specific occasion that we do certain act of worship. This is, has no basis in religion. There is no, nothing in religion well related to this issue. So it's a pure innovation. It's a pure innovation in religion. Also, some people, some people, what they invented religion, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with things also has no basis in religion. That like some sect, they start worshiping Allah by dancing and by musics. They play musics uh, and uh, they dance uh, and they jump up and down and they said this is the way we uh, perform our uh, ibadah or we worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this way. This is no base in religion and this became an innovation they call it an original innovation or bid'ah asli. Sometimes it has a base in religion. It has a base in religion but the manners, the way they perform this bid'ah it's not from the religion. For instance, by adding certain conditions, certain times, or doing it in, in a certain ways, which is not from the religion. Let's give an example. If somebody said, I want to do a five rak'ah every day after Asr, praying has based, it's good to pray. The Prophet ﷺ said, pray as much as you make prayer, as much as you raise your status in Jannah. And Allah SWT ordered us to perform the prayer, Nusalli. So if somebody said, I want to invent five rak'ahs every day after Asr, it became innovation because five and after Asr, uh, putting this time, putting this number of rak'ahs or the way he performed the prayer, if he make his own performance, three ruku', three sujoods, things like that, it will become an innovation because the manner he practiced that act of worship, it's not from the religion. So it either has no foundation or at, at all, or maybe it has base in religion, but the way he perform it is not from the religion. Most of the innovations from the second group of, or the second part, we call that an additional uh, innovation, bid'ah idhafiyya. And we'll talk about it maybe a little bit more in future. Okay, the reason, and this now the last condition, the reason for this act was present at the time of the Prophet Muhammad and any hindrance was absent. So the reason for this act was exist in the Prophet was there and there is no hindrance prevented the Prophet from doing it. There is nothing prevented the Prophet from doing it. I give you an, a real example happened in the history of Islam. That Bani, one of Bani Umayyah's uh, kings or uh, caliphs decided to uh, change the way people perform Eid prayer. He said, I will make the khutbah before the salat because I want everybody to attend the khutbah. Because after the salat al-Eid finish, everybody leave and nobody listened to him when he addressed the community. So he said, I'm going to switch. I'm going to put the khutbah before the, before the salat and it's for the benefit of the Muslim that they listen to the khutbah, attend the dua, and so on. This has become an act of bid'ah, innovation, and not accepted, and the scholar said, it's not allowed. Why? Because this reason, this reason, which is uh, attending to the khutbah, benefiting from the khutbah, that's why he invented that act, was exist in the Prophet ﷺ time. And there is nothing prevented the Prophet ﷺ from doing that. That's why it became innovation. That's why it became innovation, an innovation. Also, another example of somebody said, people go back home now after Asr uh, or before Asr and they are so sleepy. Let's add to the Asr prayer, As-Salatu Khayrun Min al -Nawm. Let's uh, ask, add to the Salat, the Asr Adhan, when they call the Adhan for the Asr prayer, let's add As-Salatu Khayrun Min al -Nawm. It will be permissible? No, it's an act of uh, innovation and it's not acceptable. Anyway, unfortunately, again, uh, the time is up and we must end here. And inshallah, we'll continue our discussion in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.